sort of immediate image that I have when they asked me to do the performance was the idea of a spit take. Because my mouth is really my instrument and my art maker, I would say that like having water spray out of my mouth was like some just seemed like the natural way to go. So using my arms to activate the screen and really sort of try to use them as fins. It was a really exciting idea to sort of be able to um, to do a performance for NRDC um, using whale songs. Tona has uh, always had a, a taste for interactivity and somehow to make the experience for his public very fun and very enjoyable. And one day he was doing a workshop in China and uh, he saw a very old man painting with water on the floor. And then he, um, he had the, uh, the idea to make uh, an installation with some water. Uh, and then he wanted also to do something with the light and he was like, oh, why not putting them together and to create uh, what will be water like graffiti. This year the water program is working with NRDC's artist in residence and our arts outreach program. It's a great way to help see firsthand how they interact with water and talk to them about some of the challenges we face with our water resources. And we're hoping to get over 4,000 people to sign a letter to President Obama thanking him for his leadership on the clean water rule and urging them to let him know how important these issues are to safeguard some of our most precious rivers, lakes, and streams. The project that I came up with to do in the NRDC booth on top of the beautiful water light graffiti panels was to trace the migration of a particular individual bird who's known as Moonbird in the scientific community, but who's also become somewhat of a celebrity. Uh, Moonbird is a Rufa red knot. It's a species of shorebird that makes an incredible 9,000 mile migration every year. And scientists have tracked Moonbird for over 20 years, meaning that he has flown far enough that he could have flown to the moon, uh, hence the nickname. So this particular bird is interesting to me because it's an endangered species. It's one of the few endangered species threatened by climate change and I chose to draw the continents that the bird migrates past and then um, trace the migration 20 times over marking his 350,000 mile journey using a water bird feather dipped in water to activate the light and thinking of it kind of as a moonlight trace that then fades and disappears. Together with the NRDC and the Water Light Graffiti piece, we decided to focus on the ephemeral nature of light and the spectrum of color that's created after a rain or a storm in water droplets, and that is the rainbow. To bring in a reference of the biblical flood and the rainbow which uh, happened after the biblical flood, God said that we've now created a covenant between man and God, and that all the plants and animals are now of the dominion of the people. So the, the actual term from the Bible, although it's uh, subject to conjecture, is that I set my bow as a covenant. So we wanted to reference that statement to make that the humans have the dominion over all of the things on the earth. And look at where that's landed us. At the same time, it's a beautiful phenomenon that we can all agree across cultures is an absolutely magical thing that we all love to see a rainbow and we love to see a prism and we love to see the spectrum of colors brought to light. That we could make this ephemeral gesture between the white light of the LEDs making some billowing clouds and then leaving the gel on because they trap water between the, the plastic and the light itself. I guess I was thinking about water and I started to think about how much water my body is composed of. And so I started to research what kind of number that would be and I was very curious as to what it would feel like, what it would look like. And so that's where I came up with the idea to bring in a mass of water that would be equivalent to the amount of water in my body, which was 31.25 kilos. The, the ice itself was fascinating to me because I'd never had the chance to be around that like kind of specific sort of thermal mass. And then I was thinking about sort of translating the ice into like an image that we have of ice. It's so far from anything that I've ever experienced, like an iceberg. 
It was also quite interesting working within the constraints of the light panel and being at an art fair as well to see how like we could I could try and render or understand it in terms of a form that would manifest on the board. Natural Resource Defense Council, it's an American organization, but we are working globally because action across the globe is necessary to protect our homes, our communities, our neighborhoods, and our, our interests of our citizens. Our presence in the exhibits we've had at Art Expo have all been interactive to bring people into vibrant engagement, to use water to activate energy and light and express themselves. We welcome membership. It provides us with the power of people to make the case for the protection of endangered species and the restoration of the health and welfare of our cities and citizens.